This round's AFL Record Print Edition is available on game day at newsagents, Coles and Coles Express. Also online via afl.com.au, the AFL app, sen.com.au and the SEN app. Proudly part of our top sport, official wagering part of the AFL Record. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. Jason Richardson has been magnificent. Uh, Olympics update for Made Internet and Mobile. Award-winning Aussie service mobile plans for 20 bucks. Richard, just you and me at the moment, my friend, and may I commend you on your performance in the mix zone. It has been of the highest quality. Oh, hello, G. And on behalf of the whole of Australia, Brendan, get stuffed. He's just doing his role, mate. He's just uh, he's, just, he's meant to talk, for Christ's sake. Um, mate, isn't it? What a night of track and field last night, G. Um, I don't know if you've been an athletics fan as a rule beforehand, um, but... Oh, it was fantastic stuff. What about the men's high jump? Oh, yeah. Those that missed it, the men's high jump, we Brandon Stark was fantastic. He ended up finishing fifth. He jumped higher than any Australian has in Olympic Games. He jumped 2 metres 35. Think about that when you're at home. We <laughs> ooh and ah and get that excited when a, when a uh, two-metre guy slam dunks a basketball into a three-metre hoop. These guys are lobbing over. Two metres 35, just short of a basketball ring, if you don't mind. It is extraordinary how, how high they jump. Everyone should do Dark that. Dark jumps 235. They shouldn't measure that... it on the wall. Everyone should do that at home. Get, get your ruler out or your tape measure and measure 235 and just look at that and say, how can a man get his body over the top of that? 100%. And you, when you do it, you'll do it up the wall and it'll be right up into the ceiling in, in Australia for most of the houses we have. It's <laughs> unbelievable how high they jump. Then we got to a scenario where an Italian and a Qatar, the, uh, the best jumper in the world in Bashim, who's jumped 243, they tied and they were meant to go for a jump off. They looked at each other, a little wink, wink, said to the judge, we don't want to jump off. We'll both have a gold medal. Thank you very much. And then the scenes were unbelievable. And the judge said, okay, it's quite part of the rules. It was changed three years ago. They didn't have to do a jump off and uh, they couldn't be separated. So dual gold medalists in the high jump. Are you a Theater fan of mate. that, Richo? This is the great Jason Richardson who's slaying them for Channel 7 over there in Tokyo. Are you a fan of that? I thought that was sort of the all or nothing, the cutthroat nature, your one chance every four years to be a winner. I don't know whether, is that going against the spirit of what this is about or not? It's interesting because I, I love the human aspect of it. I thought, oh, what a wonderful story they yeah, share. Yeah, I get it. Metal. Me then too. Then I actually started to sit, then I started to sit there and think, hang on. So if there's five guys yes. or girls that have tied and can't be separated and ready for a jump off, why wouldn't all five of them look at each other and go, hey, stuff the jump off, let's all have a gold medal. Correct. Like, the rule was changed three years ago. International Athletics changed the rule to allow this. Um, I love the story, but I'm a bit with you. I just kept thinking, hang on, are you allowed to do that? Mm. But it, it doesn't quite feel right, but I love the romance of it. Hey, Richo, no one knows more about the art of sprinting in this country than you do. Rowan Browning, he missed the men's 100-metre <laughs> final after finishing fifth in his semi. Gary and I were talking about him this morning. What, what, what's the ceiling on this young man, do you think? Well, I don't think there is a uh, ceiling, uh, Sleepy. Thanks for joining us. Um, <laughs> look, he is, he is an immense talent. You know, and it's interesting because both with your unbelievable backgrounds in sport, mm. you know how when you see a young guy arrive in whatever sport it is who has this unbelievable belief that they belong? Yes. He has that, he as has. opposed to... So many Australian athletes in the past have stood, whether it be in the 100 metres or whatever event, and looked around and been in awe of all these unbelievable, you know, great world-class athletes. I loved his attitude of, I was in lane one in my heat, and they don't introduce the lane one. They only introduce in the heats, lanes four or five and six, the key athletes. He, uh, he said, so I felt like they disrespected me there. They didn't know who I was. He's not, not overawed. He actually believes he's good enough. And I'm with him now. He ran 10.01 and then 10.09. That was fantastic. He blew the start in the semi-final. He gets that start right. He's right there with him, and I think he makes the final. And then when you get to the final, as we saw last night, with an Italian Jacobs winning and running an unbelievable time to win, anything can happen. 
he, he's only 23. The, re- yeah. the reality is you look at, you know, the strength required for the, you know, the 100 metres, especially in the men and the women. Um, you re- you know, you towards 30, he'll be at his absolute best if he can maintain the passion and the desire. So, uh, look out, Paris. Look out, uh, LA. And look out, the st- look out, still gift too. What sort of a mark would he get at still? I mean, you ran off a very generous fourteen and well, a half meters getting... to win, but what sort of a mark would he get? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know that the limit's ten, and he would get zero. And I would be, I would be saying, you got to put him on, on zero, and you can lift everyone up towards ten. No one goes past ten. And wouldn't it be bloody awesome to watch him storm over the top and win? As a heap of people are pointing out, there was a seven-way playoff for a bronze medal in the in the golf, so they weren't accepting of any time. That's right. Yeah. Hey, what about well, the... maybe they didn't know the rule? But they could have just had a chat. <laughs> they could have just said, yeah. bronze. They would have ran out. It was very expensive bronze. <laughs> um, what about the big Italian hundred meter winner? Was that give us some sort of a uh, insight into the whether that was a massive upset that we all think it is, or was it was he a bit of a dark horse? No, no, no. It was a legitimate upset. We had a great interview with him where he was uh, he's such a personality. This guy was a long jumper two mm. years ago, yeah. um, and concentrated. He, he obviously had the speed. For long jump, he used to bounce out around uh, 8.30, 8.40 for the long jump. So he's an in- incredible talent. He is a man, mountain. He's a father of three kids. He had a baby earlier this year, so he's been a busy boy. Um, I've been watching him a lot in the Diamond League circuit. He's been competitive without being startling. I mean, the Americans blew it here. Um, Fred Curley got silver. The guy that uh, was a former 400-meter runner has come down to the one. But then you look at the American trials only four weeks ago and uh, Bramell and um, should have right been, for what we saw there, and Ronnie Baker, they should have been right there in right amongst the medals, but they weren't. I mean, Bramell didn't even make the final. So it was a surprise. But as you two know, it's about delivering mm. when it counts most. So home and away is one thing, but delivering on grand final day, I would suggest the track and field slash the Olympic Games. There's no bigger stage to get it right than the, the title of the fastest person on the planet and uh, he nailed it. Talking to Jason Richardson live from Tokyo this morning, the Jamaicans were unbelievable in the women's 100 metre final. Elaine Thompson took the goal but it looked a little bit frosty post-race. Yeah, there was lots of hugs between silver and bronze, wasn't there? Not a lot of <laughs> hugs uh, for uh, gold. Oh, um, Goldie girl. Elaine used to train with him. Yeah, what happened? What um, happened there? What's the background to that? I, I don't know the actual personality background, but I think they did train together and then um, it's hard to train with a competitor that you're desperate to beat. So Elaine uh, Thompson, uh, now Elaine thompson Hero decided to go elsewhere. So she went to Usain Bolt's team and, well, she's back-to-back Olympic champion and Mama Rocket, Shelley Ann Fraser-Price, who is just a lovely human being. She was fantastic in a post-race interview I did with her. She was so entertaining. I mean, she's been four Olympic finals, four Olympic medals in 100 metres is extraordinary. So there was a little bit of frost there. What about the story about Peter Bowl, the Mm. Aussie guy who's made it through to the 800 metre final? For those that don't know his backstory, he was born in Sudan at four years of age. His family fled Sudan due to the civil war there. They lived in Egypt uh, in a refugee camp for four years. They finally escaped. They went, they immigrated to Australia. They started at Townsville. Then they went over to Perth. Um, He loved basketball at 16 years of age. He was loving his basketball, but he was desperate for some more speed. He took up athletics, and the rest is history. He's an Olympic finalist, our first finalist in the 800 metres since 1968. And he has a legitimate chance of a medal because you know why? He just has a crack. He gets up the front and has a crack. He's fantastic. Yep, there's the, the Wish calls him Spag. Do you think that'll um, uh, catch on over there in Tokyo? Look, I might not go with that as my <laughs> first question when I chat to him. <laughs> I said a nays, actually. I, I might hold it back to six or seven just in case. Go with a nays. Right, <laughs> what are we looking forward to today? So we're sitting there in front of the tally. Uh, what can we look forward to today? Okay, so it's roasting hot yet again. So uh, I'm about to uh, go through the, the gates into the stadium. It'll be, once again, these the heat in the morning is extraordinary. Mm. We keep running these distance races. So we've got three female athletes running in the 1,500 metres. Um, 
that's going to be tough. Georgia Griffith's done her preparation in Australia. And then uh, Jess Hull, who's been uh, over in America for the mighty uh, Oregon Ducks, who's the NCAA champion. She's in really good shape. Just missed the Aussie record and the Aussie record holder in Lyndon Hall. I think Lyndon and Jess will get through. But that is going to be tough because it's so humid. There's, there's no air at all that gets into the stadium. When you look at the stadium, there's just no airflow. So the sun's belting down at 38 degrees. Humidity is about 85% with no airflow. So the poor distance runners are just cooking. And then a little later on this morning, Riley Day, the, uh, the youngster who probably became more famous for running down the back straight against Usain Bolt in uh, a Nitro meet in Australia. She's a real talent. I think she can get through to the semifinals, the, uh, the youngster. Hey, just quickly, 200. just quickly, Richard, you've done a magnificent job this morning. I got a text from my mum last night. She said to ask me whether or not I knew you. I said I do. She said, "Can you get a message to him? Make sure he's putting on a nice sunscreen." She's <laughs> she's worried about you getting burnt over there. Trust me, you should see me. I walk out, I do a piece to camera, and then I hide under the shade like a like a little cowy little boy. But I mate, Slip, stop, slap, my friend. No one wants a sunburnt melon. No. Especially when you've got no hair on it. You've been great. Good well, work. Yeah, no, and we can be serious here. You're doing a fantastic job over there, and we love it when you join us in the mornings, and uh, we'll talk again soon. I very much look forward to it. Go the Mighty Blues. Good on, on you, Richard. Jason Richardson doing a fantastic... He is, and we're not, we're not joking. He is doing an... And we... If you've watched, you know we're not joking. The Hockey Roos take on India. Quarterfinals today from 1 o'clock. That's Tokyo 2020 live free. And in HD on 7 and 7 Plus, the only place to see it all, you'll hear it all here. The official broadcast of the only one is SEN.